Maloney's Hardware and Garden Stores. Uh huh. You know what? Right now, are you feeling it? I'm not, not feeling. Not it. feeling it. Yeah, <laughs> me neither. M and M's. Jeez, sick. Grapefruit M and M's. Gross. Well, I had my well Kenny, as you've seen, I've tried. Hey, it's a nice day. I hey, gotta get out on the tractor. Let's this go. fun Friday train is farming. Bradaloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1,281. Let's do it. April 5th, 2024. 85 degrees on this day just three years ago in 2021. And it was 12 degrees not long ago on this day in 1979. And now if and now the water is not ready for swimming yet, but that means it's a great time to get aquaside and get ahead of the curve, get that swimming area all cleaned up, get rid of the algae, get rid of the weeds. So the first time it hits 75 or 80 and the kids go down there and jump in, they won't be screaming and shrieking and fearful of underwater creatures. Aquaside gets rid of all that stuff. They've been maintaining Great Lake Shores for more than 60 years with the complete line of lake and pond control products. They're easy to use, they work quickly, and they're safe. They're registered with the EPA and DNR. Don't let the weeds overtake the whole swimming area. Call Aquaside today. Explain what you're looking at. They'll get you the right products, and your place will look great all summer long. Call Aquaside at 1-800-328-9350 or go to Aquaside.com. Oh, I got to do the ice out. I got to do the ice out. Right. Leroy was about to kick off the uh, ice out dates. <sighs> the best of luck, Mayor. <laughs> Minnetonka went out on this day in 1895, 1896, 1930. White Bear went out on, uh, oh, in 2015. White Bear has no ice outs for this day. Now, there's 169 years oh, God. between 1855 and now. What are you looking at? Are you sure? Um, I'm looking at hope. <laughs> of all those years, only 16 ice outs are not in the month of April. Holy crap. I'll play the damn song. Hail the flashlight, King. <laughs> And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Height in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor. Joe Sushi. Every one of you is on double secret probation. You could in the guy that just drank out of a fruit cup. You know, sip? You know, Reavers is all worked up because the governor uh, had a proclamation today naming April second chance month. And uh, Reavers has it. Uh, he mistakenly believes this means Walls wants to run around and release people. Uh, two things about this. It's one of those whereas deals, yeah. uh, and it basically it says be aware of the people who've had criminal justice experience and they need a second chance, and maybe you can give them a job or whatever. First of all, do you know how many of these things governors do? How many? About you? 10 a day. We got one, for God's sake, right. from Dayton, from Mark Dayton. Plus, that this is the sincere. same thing that's showing up in other states. So the political class is currying favor with various constituencies by making April second chance month. Okay, are you calm down now? Mm, this, no. this has been around for seven years. It's been around a and, long time. And it first started as a bipartisan resolution in the U.S. Senate that passed unanimously. Oh. Every every senator voted for it, and it's been in a bunch of states with a bunch of Republican and Democratic governors issuing the Second Chance Month proclamation since then, including uh, some fairly conservative ones like Brian Kemp and Mike DeWine and John Bell Edwards. So Now, let's clear up some things. I'm still outraged. <laughs> let's clear up some things. For example, how you fly from here to Australia and what direction you'd face. Our friend Carl Bear in Northfield emailed me. He's a former pilot, Navy, Northwest Airlines, the whole deal. Yeah. I think Navy. 
I'm a little behind on the podcast, but wanted to mention The Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. That's the book I've been raving about. She, uh, The character in The Great Circle wishes to fly around the globe vertically. Right. Uh, my wife gave me the book for Christmas, never having, uh, ha- never having heard your endorsement. And I started reading it while on vacation in the Cayman Islands about nine weeks ago. Tough time. The huh? first 200 pages were kind of rough going, especially the sections dealing with Hollywood and movie making. But then my interest really picked up when Marion, she's the lead character, learned to fly and Jamie, the character's brother, started painting for a living. You'll have to explain this to the rest of the game because it gets very complicated. Mm. And Carl, I'm not going to waste my breath huh. trying to explain a good <laughs> book you. to them. Being both a pilot, world traveler, and ex-Navy, yes, Navy, there was a lot to enjoy in reading the book. For what it's worth, I have visited a lot of locations in the book. I spent much time in Alaska where I've known many pilots, also visited many times in Hawaii, Montana, England, Sweden, Canada, but never to Spitsbergen or Antarctica. Maggie Shipstead's knowledge about aviation and navigation is very accurate and makes for fascinating reading for pilots. So when can we expect an interview with Ms. Shipstead during Author's Corner? Eh, I don't know, the book's a little old. One slight correction for you. If you were to fly from Minnesota directly to Australia, Mm -hmm. are you paying attention now? Mm -hmm. Your flight path would go over San Francisco, south of Hawaii, just a little north of Fiji, then straight on to Sydney. I have flown from Sydney to L.A., and it's the longest nonstop flight we flew at Northwest Orient, about 13 hours. Carl Bear, Northfield. Wow. Over Frisco, south of Hawaii, uh, just a little north of Fiji, and then bing, bang, boom, into Sydney. That shows how long ago that was. Northwest Orient. Yeah. Airlines gone. Northwest Orient. And then they have the gone, remember? That's a long time to be over the water. Man, that's That's a long time for me to be blackout drunk. Boy. Anne writes, Joe, I wanted to write to agree with you that dying by elephant is not a bad way to go. I mean this with all respect to the local woman we lost. I was just saying yesterday, you know, if I had to choose, if dying, you're gonna go. dying by elephant wouldn't be that bad. Yeah. Now, she wasn't 30 years old. She was 79. And yes, you can make the argument that she had many years left. In fact, get me her name, please. It's in the uh, paper. Get me her name. And she, uh, upon her return, one of her kids said she w- they were going to go skydiving. So she was an adventurous, yeah. adventurous gal. She and, also golfed four times a week, yeah, Joe. I saw yeah. that in the story today. Yeah. So. She's a woman after my own heart. There you go. And she died by elephant. And Anne writes, I went to Tanzania, or is it Tanzania? Tanzania. In October of 2023. I had saved for that trip for 10 years. Gail Matson. Gail Matson. God rest her soul. I had saved for this trip for 10 years. I love elephants, and my main goal was to see as many elephants as possible in their habitat. At one of the parks, we were watching a herd with matriarchs, babies, and young elephants. We started out pretty far away, but they ended up coming our way. I was filming with my iPhone when a young bull decided he did not like our location. He made aggressive movements, trumpeted, then ran toward us. Our guide, who was the best, had quietly started the Jeep and began to back up. I was still standing on my seat, hanging out of the top and filming. I will tell you that I thought for a moment to sit down, but decided to keep filming. I believed if we were going to get injured or die, I would have great video for my adult male. What's that mean? Her husband, maybe? or Whoa. Huh? Something sure. like that. Yeah. All this to say, we know not the time, but I would pick an elephant rampage over lingering illness or old age in a nursing home. Side note, the Serengeti is breathtaking. You should go. You won't regret it. Sincerely, Anne Deneen. Thank you, Anne. What and, about the uh, diarrhea, though? Isn't there a lot of diarrhea there? And Willard, Willard, Mung, Willard Munger, you're all on double secret probation for your interruptions. Well, you're going to be on major dengue if you don't. Well, maybe if you'd take a breath every now and then. You know, <laughs> do I get to talk in the show at all today? And Willard Munger weighs in saying, I'll take death by rogue elephant at age 79 any day. We, mm-hmm. Why die quietly? Plus, think of all the family lore. 
Well, great uncle Bill died in the war. He was a hero. Grandpa Sven died at 110. He lived a long life. Yeah, but Grandma Betty was crushed by a rogue elephant. What a way to go. Then it would be embellished <laughs> over time. There was right. Grandma Betty setting, standing out in the Serengeti, staring down the package yeah. with her wooden spoon, yelling at Jumbo to behave. <laughs> and then, spoon. boom. Yeah. Yeah. Her, her roller, yeah. that roller thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wasn't the uh, Serengeti featured prominently in, I believe, a tune featured on Garage Logic? Um, doom, doom, I bless doom, the rains doom, doom, down doom, doom, in Africa doom. by Toto. And she, and she yes. Ludwig. Yes, oh, she loved that song. She liked that song. Oh, Africa, she loved that oh, song. Oh, loves that song. That was her favorite remake, song, which was a great remake, by the way. An average song. Weezer. What's that up, wasn't Weezer? even average, Joe. It was awful. But Angie loved it. Right. So, so we liked it. <laughs> yeah. I can't talk music. So, <laughs> no, you shouldn't because your tastes are very questionable. Right, and, John. Uh, oh, I just, right I just can't, get, I can't get involved. I'm no, sorry. you're, you have no taste. You, <laughs> you think that, uh, uh, Toto, if you think Toto had a good song there, uh, yeah. you, you really need I, to be hospitalized. I can't get yeah. <laughs> Wait, do you not want to whip it into shape? Go for it. Is that those people that wore the flower pots? Yeah, it's not too late. I suppose John liked them, too. I, I oh, can't, that's I can't, good I can't stuff. Comment. Can't His comment favorite was that. Turning Japanese. I think I'm Turning Japanese. That's the Vapors. I really think that's so. all I can say about that song. So. What did Wasn't you say? Wasn't that Devo? That's the Vapors. I thought Turning Devo Japanese. covered that. Oh. Yeah. No. Well, maybe they covered it, but the hit was. You know, Rookie, if you wouldn't interrupt so much, I would have heard what John said. Huh? I didn't say much because I can't really talk about music anymore. So, is it fair that Biden wants to uh, ban menthol cigarettes? Okay, this I was upset about this when St. Paul did this, and I don't know if anybody else has said this, but to me, this is racism at its finest. It's outward, blatant. We hate you, black people, and here's what we're going to do to prove it. I don't understand why black. Males is my experience. I don't know about females. I don't know what the attraction is of menthol cigarettes. When I smoked, oh, I did not like menthol. I would I would occasionally buy a pack of new ports or cools. I loved them. I wonder why. My wife, uh, especially when you get the flu or you're sick. Oh, they're wonderful. They my actually old man make you get better. He, my old man, when he was trying to wean himself off the straight luckies, smoked Alpine. Alpine. Oh. Remember I don't those? know if I know no. that, bro. Oh, yeah, Alpine. No. They were a menthol cigarette. Oh. Huh. Uh, in any event, the FDA uh, is uh, wishing to ban menthol cigarettes. Uh, St. Paul has already made it impossible to buy menthol cigarettes in St. Paul. I, I don't know why. They don't have the courage to just ban <laughs> cigarettes. The excuse, ban them they're all, right. the, the excuse they're using is they lump menthols in with flavored tobacco. And the reason they want to ban flavored tobacco is to protect the kiddos. Well, B as in B, S as in S, because menthols have been around forever. Forever. They Long, preceded yeah. uh, flavored cigarettes or yeah. flavored tobacco. I mean, people were smoking menthols in the 40s and 50s. For Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, I, I'm on the side of people who do not want to ban menthols. Show me something. And why does... Why does I, I mean this seriously? Let's Why go. does Biden always look mean? He's always he angry. Does. He does look mean. But he's got that angry old man look. He's I really think it's got the nasty look. Part of it is he's not quite sure where he is. Right. That I would be mad really too be. if I never knew where I was. Where am I? But it, I'm trying to figure out why there there isn't a big hue and cry over this, Joe. And is it just because there's hardly any smokers left anymore? I think uh, that's a good answer. They're, they're like ten bucks a pack now. Yeah, I, I, it's been a long time. 1987, way, I quit cigarettes. Speaking of, uh, I'm coming up on my one-year anniversary here at the beginning of May. I think that's good. Now, yeah. when I have my celebratory smoke, <laughs> am I allowed to kill a whole pack, or do I just no, get you, one? See, here's the problem. You don't get a celebratory <laughs> light-up uh, on the year Well, yeah, it's, it's a celebration. Now, I've made it a year. Well, if you think you can do that, and then, 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 and then. Do we get well, it? And then, and then, and then so not have another the, one. Go ahead. Play version? Do we send you a cake? Do we get you a card? Yeah, no. A, a cigars. Oh, okay. Sure. Swisher Sweets. Un, unflavored. I gave up the smoke. Swisher I'm on the cigars. Yeah. I never thought I would see the day when I looked forward to a woman's basketball game. 
I really, uh, really, that's a very okay. novel for me. I will, I will add to that a text from Bob. Am I able to get ESPN on the Amazon Fire Stick t- tonight? What are you talking about? My, my dad, he's, yeah. he's got a fire seat. He doesn't have cable. He's got a fire stick. I he's, would imagine the answer about, is yes. He's worried about watching the game is yeah. my point. Yeah. I'm so glad you mentioned women's college basketball. Yes. Because, Joe, in my infinite quest to find audio for the Garage Logic podcast... You mean when you're not eating? Correct. Right. <laughs> or looking at baseball highlights. I found audio of your vice president of the United States talking about the inequities of women's sports versus college sports. Are you ready? Yes. It's quite a buildup. Do huh? you know, okay, a bit of a history lesson. Do you know that women were not, the women's teams were not allowed to have brackets until 2022? Think about that and what uh, that talk about progress, that. you know, better late than never, but progress and what that has done. Because, of course, when, you know, I had a bracket, I'm, it's not broken completely, but I won't talk <laughs> about my bracket. But, you know, what? just how we love we love March Madness and even just now allowing the women to have brackets and what that does to encourage people to talk more about the women's teams, to watch fool. them. Now they're being covered. You know, and and this is the reality. People used to say, "Oh, women's sports." Who's interested? How long is this well, if you can't gas see, bag talk? Too long. Here. Doesn't that sound like this is something she looked up on her phone on Wikipedia on the limo ride over? <laughs> it, this is what talk radio sounds like when you don't do show prep. I'll give you a tidbit. I don't <laughs> you even know. <laughs> I'll give you a tidbit. I don't remember where I read it. Maybe in the local papers, either yesterday or today. Caitlin Clark from embryonic age. All she ever wanted to do was go to Connecticut, and Connecticut ignored her. Mm-hmm. They did not recognize her talent coming out of high school. Which is odd because they do recruit this area, and I'm including Iowa with us. Well, look at Paige Buchers e- extensively, from here. yes. So that gives you another added uh, side story tonight. Go that, Hawkeyes. Uh, oh. That, that uh, Caitlin Clark, uh, who's desperately wanted to go to Yukon and be a Husky. Are they the Huskies? Yes. Uh, had to settle for being a Hawkeye, and she's, well, she's turned that uh, into a gold mine. Go ahead, Johnny. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, I think you probably saw that in the Wall Street Journal today, Joe. I saw the same same. Maybe article. that's where I saw it. Yeah. I think, though, that we all should, we owe the Biden-Harris a ticket a lot of thanks. They created Brackets? a women's bracket in 2022. I didn't how know did they that. Do that is just how did they know how? Uh, thank you. It seems you. to me I've seen them prior to Not that. only have we seen them, I remember in Mankato in 99 doing a women's bracket yeah. for Division Freaking 2 basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't it seem, you guys, that maybe this is the uh, obvious and I shouldn't bother, but doesn't it seem when an elected official gets involved with something cool that the country likes, it just lessens the whole experience. Yes. Yes. It just makes it last. 100%. What's more embarrassing, her saying this or Lieutenant uh, Governor Flanagan doing the abortion bracket she did last week? Uh, they're equally embarrassing. Got it. Michelle Tafoya and I are going to uh, host a, uh, oh, yeah. a cocktail hour at the Metropolitan Club in Golden Valley this coming Thursday, a week from last night. Do we get to come and heckle? And the topic is the conflation of sports and politics. And the more I think about it is, every, well, of course, everything is now political. Sure. Everything. Sure. So I I, I, I think it's going to be an interesting chat. I'm going to go. Well, I hope you get a ticket. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, Don't look at me. I need to pony up the money. Don't <laughs> look at me. I'm actually going to be in town next Thursday, <sighs> the 11th. And, uh, it's 5.30 I am, to 7.30. I am uh, uh, definitely... Not going. <laughs> Sponsored by the uh, Center of the American Experiment. I'm looking forward to John Can Hinderocker he... will moderate. Okay. I am going to go sit in the parking lot of a convenience store and eat Doritos instead. <laughs> what okay. flavor? Cool ranch. Okay. <laughs> Who's grilling tonight? Uh, uh, ding. 